Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm very pleased to introduce today's third demo. Expert is one, bridging the skills, bringing the skills opportunity to life. Caitlin Bigsby, Director of Product Marketing and Farrakh Farazash, Principal Solution Consultant are going to guide us through our demo today. Caitlin and Farrakh, I'll throw it over to you. All right, thanks so much, Jess. Uh, let me start my, uh, my screen sharing and uh, let's get going. So, the, the opportunity to bring um, skills and upskilling um, to fruition, we've been talking about this potential for a really long time, but I think we've, uh, there's been a lot of struggle to make it work, partly because it's a really labor intensive uh, process. And, but it's really critical because the, the rate at which skills are changing, as we all know, is because business has been changing. So the needs for the skills of, of the people doing the work to evolve uh, has never been more, more important. In fact, according to the, um, World Economic Forum, there's been 183% increase in the rate of change just in the last four years. And the number one cause of change, of course, is technical disruption. How we do the work, the tools we have to do the work um, have changed dramatically. And this, the second cause is a change of talent. And this is uh, due to a few factors. You have people retiring, people not being able to keep pace with, with the, the technical change. Their jobs are changing and they're not able to change with it. Uh, the pandemic, of course, introduced a whole uh, host of reasons of people reevaluating what they wanted to to do. But if you take those two things together, it means how we do business is changing and the skills we need to do business is changing. And talent, of course, is at, at the root of uh, making sure we can meet the needs of businesses going forward. But as I said, skills has been a really labor intensive process. And it's been really, really difficult to execute. Um, I spent a good 10 years as a business consultant working with, with organizations just like you, trying to implement skills uh, programs in the LMS, um, and we always got hung up on the same thing. We just kind of got overwhelmed by the sheer amount of work and volume. Um, and I think the response to this was this desire to do a sort of learner-led skills development process, that is get a ton of training um, tied, to, tied to skills and just sort of throw it out there and allow learners sort of to follow their bliss and find their training. But that's not solving the problem either. Um, and the problem with this sort of learner-led approach is, of course, first of all, learners have to want to upskill. They have to identify gaps in their own skills profiles that they want to fill, and they have to have an impetus and a, and a desire to fill. They also have to have the time to do it or feel like they have the time to do it. They then have to look to your learning system to close that gap rather than a third party or, or external um, in order for it to become a part of your organizational skill philosophy um, and, and, and an inventory rather. The skills that they choose to pursue, so those are blue skills that the learner is looking at, might not be the skills that your organization actually needs, the, those pink skills. So you're still left with holes in the skill, the, the learner's skill profile from the organization's point of view. And what we need to do really to make a skills solution work for an organization is we have to flip this around. Um, and not to say that we don't want to support learners' desires to learn, but we have to recognize that it's not working. It's not getting developing learners into the workforce that the organization needs, um, or at least it's doing so at an incredibly slow pace. Um, so we need to flip this around and look at a little bit more directive approach. And that's the philosophy that that Expertus One is taking, uh, particularly when it comes to being a learner, um, learning management solution. I mean, we're just part of the solution and part of the strategy for an organization. That's because uh, skills is much bigger than just learning it development. Um, and that starts with leadership, for example. Leadership knows what direction they want to take the organization and what skills they're going to need, um, or at least at a broad scope. They know where they're going to go with the organization, and then we can kind of figure out what, what skills profiles are needed to support the organization in its shift. Talent acquisition teams know which skills are hard to hire for, and that should be another uh, piece of the skills puzzle when it comes to learning and development. Which skills can you hire for versus which skills make more sense to develop in-house in order to keep the, the teams moving forward? Data analytic skills are a really good example for that. Um, that, uh, that skill is becoming more and more important across various positions than they ever have been before, and trying to hire for them might be a lot harder than simply developing them in-house. 
this one is critical is that the proactive assignment of learning to a learner is far more likely to result in the learner completing the training that is needed to support the organize, um, organizational objectives. The learner knows that it's something that they need to do. Uh, the learner's managers knows it's something they need to do. The organization knows it's something that they need to do. So rather than waiting for the learner to go, oh yes, I'm gonna develop the skill, the learner sees that, oh, this is a skill I need to learn. That, that this is uh, valuable. And this final one I think is really important because the still is about employee development. The still is about supporting employee growth and employees still want that. They wanna be able to grow in their role. And when you actually are supporting learners in developing skills the organization needs, that's going to result in more mobility within the organization. Uh, and that's going to create that sort of virtuous cycle that employees find fulfilling, which is developing themselves professionally and growing professionally, but they're doing so in a way that really makes sense for the organization. So it works for everybody. And so this is what the, the mindset we're taking to skills, and I know it's a little bit, um, I've been calling it the hot take that we have on skills, we're flipping the script um, and saying that the organization needs to be a little bit more in the driver's seat, as it absolutely doesn't preclude the ability for learners to seek out training that interests them, but it's far more directive and it's far more in support of the organization, which also makes it something that is a good investment for the organization and far more likely to get um, the learning and development team the resources that they need. Uh, to support it. So talking, uh, getting started with a skills strategy looks like this, one that's actually workable and applicable. First of all, is focusing, focusing on the skills that are critical to the success of the organization. Um, this is so important, otherwise you're just boiling the ocean. You don't need to create skills profiles for every single skill under the sun. You will need to identify the ones that are really critical and important to the organization. Um, and those skills might be also more critical for some jobs than others, but focusing in what, on what is really important um, is gonna help you focus your own resources on where it's supposed to go. Ownership is a big one. I think where a lot of skills um, assignments to fall apart after, you know, if you've managed to get to the point where you can assign skills to jobs and jobs to people and they can see their skills, where it next falls apart is, do the learners actually complete their learning? Are managers allowing learners time to finish their training? That's um, a big problem, regardless of what they're doing. Um, and, and are they uh, also validating those skills? I mean, simply taking training in a skill does not necessarily mean you have acquired that skill. You need to put that skill into practice in some case, or at very least be observed putting that skill into practice so that you can say that you have that skill with certainty. Um, and that ownership is missing in a, in a lot of places, but that's something that's really critical if you're going to have any kind of sense of certainty in the skills that your, your learners have. And finally, sort of managing that skill. So putting the right people in the right roles with the right skills, um, measuring the skills success. So are you getting better mobility with, um, with skills when people are developing themselves? Are you getting better retention? Um, are you able to see better productivity as an organization? So that's sort of the long-term view once you do get a skill strategy in place is to look at that long-term view. So where we're going with skills at Expertus One, and Farrick's going to show you where we are, but we do have some things on the immediate roadmap um, for the next year in a bit. So I want to talk a little bit about that before he shows you where we are and how we really support this organizational driven learner based um, skills development. Uh, of course, this is the scale, and so the scale has been the hardest part for uh, developing effective skills strategies. We're uh, leveraging AI to manage that big job of skills assignment, of making that relationship between skills and jobs, um, but also developing skills assessment so you can know what to look for when you're uh, confirming whether or not somebody has the skills. And more AI is also going to be a huge help in helping us identify skills adjacencies and identifying which skills are critical to an organization. And we're going to be leveraging all of that to make it uh, faster and more automated. And as I mentioned, this big one, closing that loop of ascertaining that an employees have actually got the skill and demonstrated the skill and creating that accountability, which is a part I think that is really missing from a lot bigger, bigger picture. And we'll be doing this by, for example, making it easier for managers or assessors to um, assess skills that they've been demonstrated that the employee in fact has it. Uh, we will make it easier to integrate into performance management solutions, making it actually accountable, uh, both for the learners for completing the training and the managers in support of the training. We're also gonna make it fun, making sure that there's gamification for both employees 
and for managers, uh, you know, for example, managers uh, really should be encouraged to have teams that are fully upskilled as necessary. But we really want to close that loop so you get that certainty, that confidence that people are doing the training that they need to do and demonstrating that they have the skills so that when the organization starts to tap people on the shoulder to fulfill these roles that they need with those skills, they actually have the confidence that people have them and they have a, a talent pool to pull from. And finally, identifying skills. Um, this is our longer term goal of identifying skills adjacencies. And that is, you know, again, the world is changing very quickly. We might be moving into areas uh, that we've never been before. Um, and it might be that nobody has the skill that we actually need, but they have a skill that's very similar. And that makes them a better bet to upskill into those new roles that we need. Uh, and also to identify high potential employees who, again, have a collection of skills that are not quite what they are looking for, but really close and make them good op options to upskill and move forward. Uh, so those are, are all part of our, our bigger plan to support this idea of organizational growth and movement and flexibility and agility and all those things. Um, so we'll be looking at uh, this skills to job assignment with AI will be coming this year. Uh, we'll be looking at AI generated proficiency lists later next year and observational checklists later next year. Uh, performance system integration is also uh, going to be part of our, our early delivery and assessor workflows. That is any kind of way to make it easier for a skills assessor to, to do that um, so that it doesn't interfere with their work or that it's something that gets forgotten or pushed to the side. And finally, the skills adjacency and high potential employees will be coming next year. And with that, I'm gonna pass it to, to Farrick to show you exactly uh, what we have today and what that experience looks like for a learner when they get that assigned training. Great, thank you, Caitlin. Uh, let me uh, share my screen here. Okay. I think I'm sharing it correctly, I believe. Uh, yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Farrakh Farizaj. I'm a principal solution consultant here at Expertus One. And so I've been in this learning industry for about 15 years. I've helped build several learning platforms, implement a lot of clients. And so I've seen over the years that, you know, skill kind of based learning is really kind of becoming an important component. And so the Expertus, uh, as an important component of learning, so the Expertus platform is a, it's a learning platform that has traditional LMS, you know, type functionality, LXP, uh, as well as skills. Skills is kind of the, the third leg of this tool. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. So what you're looking at here is a dashboard. We'll come back to this a little bit later, but I wanted to kick things off, um, you know, a little bit on the back end. So this is all starts kind of, you know, how we're making the, those tie-ins on the back end, right? So how do we generate those skills gaps? And, you know, how do we tie skills to jobs and jobs to training, et cetera? So I'm logging in on the skills kind of library side um, and looking at a skill here. And this is kind of where the, all the magic is happening. This is right now, this is um, being handled manual, but we're actually bringing AI to uh, to help with a lot of um, with a lot of this because um, the expert is one platform really um we brought in ai all over kind of it's a really um uh pervasive throughout the whole platform on the back end front end you know to make the job of managing learning and that includes the skills very easy but it starts here right so we're tying in a skill to um to training and we're trying training in a skill to the job role right and then, um, you know, again, I can mag that I can see it there. They already tied in, but then this is where I would make that actually tie, tie in. So this is this job requires these skills, right? We're still in the back end here, right? Try, um, um, so this job requires these skills at these competency levels, right? So all of this, we're going to bring in AI to kind of reduce the manual labor. The, the challenge has been, like Caitlin said, is, you know, the just can get very unwieldy to try to manage all of these kind of mappings and jobs to skills and the skills to training and all of that. So we have a functionality now, we're gonna add, bring the AI to help with that. So from that there, then we're um, automatically, um, you know, suggesting training based on those tie-ins, right? So I'm switching gears a little bit here now to a learner logged in as Darren Johnson. And I'm looking at, um, kind of the, uh, the recommendation here. So this is all uh, coming in from those tie-ins, um, from those uh, mappings that uh, we just did earlier. Uh, there's a different ways that we we have the ability to do it, right? And one of them is AI recommendation. So AI is going to be able to see, hey, I see, you know, um, the the job skills that 
your job requires and I see the, the training that you've done, et cetera, et cetera. So here's the training that you need to do to actually close those gaps. So AI is gonna, that's one way to do it, right? AI driven recommendation. Um, another approach is uh, career kind of development type recommendation. So um, again, based on that mapping, we know Darren Johnson's a business analyst. We know kind of what, what are the roles and the skills that are adjacent skills that to are him. And so we have the ability to actually um, automatically provide a career path to him uh, for the next level up. What are the kind of the next skills up? Maybe a senior business analyst, et cetera. So that's another approach when it comes to uh, um, uh, kind of skills, um, closing those gaps, right? Providing a path, a career path for upskilling, reskilling, et cetera. And the last option is using leaders, the managers. They're they're observing their employees on the job, you know, every day. I see, you know, the skills that you have. I see the skills that you don't have. You, the leaders are able to, you know, be involved in that process of, of closing those of those skill gaps, right? So there's some skill gaps here that have come um, directly uh, to Darren's um, dashboard directly from his leaders. So if I just wanted to see, you know, what are the, some of the stuff that came in from my manager, I'm able to come out and drill that list. So we have a couple of different ways to handle that, but the whole thing is being driven from that mapping, right? Um, so we're, we, you know, the organization can kind of pick and choose what the approach that makes sense for them. Uh, you know, do you want a more of a push kind of recommendation, basic career pathing, or we want to let the AI take care of it? All of those options, um, you know, are there. Probably one other thing I want to talk about, lots of innovation experts is one, right, AI all over. Um, we came with another approach. How do we access, you know, those skills and the training? Uh, traditionally, you just log in and print a transcript, et cetera. So we came up with this idea of digital skills wallet. Every employee, every non-employee, if you need to demonstrate your skill out there to somebody, you get this QR code, you can you know, save it. And whoever is looking to, to see your skills and certification and whatnot, uh, they can do that instantaneously with a, with a simple tap on the camera, right? I can see all the courses, certifications, skills that uh, Darren Johnson did. And so that's an easy and efficient way to demonstrate your skills, to demonstrate your certification uh, with a single uh, camera tap there. All right, another thing of you I wanted to show you is, so I show you kind of how it looks like some recommendation that came in from the leader. So if I switch gears a little bit to the leader side now, so I'm logged in as a leader, Sarah Johnson. Of course, we have, you know, nice looking dashboard, see where my team stands, here's my team, I can drill down into that. But now I'm able to, you know, hold my team accountable when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, what I'm observing on the job. I see the skill gaps that they have, you know, that, you know, when you hire somebody, you think they have certain skills, but you don't necessarily always um, not able to validate that until they're actually on the job. So uh, she's been observing her team members on the job and she can come up here and say, I'm interested in, you know, helping my certain somebody in my team. Um, you know, close a gap or on leadership or they want to become a leader or whatever, you know, kind of my successor, let's say I'm going to um, mentor them. I can come up here and, and suggest the type of um, kind of training to get them prepared for the for those skills and to close those skill gaps. So I can recommend that to my entire team or I can pick a select, you know, team member here. I'd say Darren Johnson, et cetera. Take a look at this training uh, because this is what you're going to need uh for you know for that job or whatnot all right so that's kind of what it looks like a little bit um you know um and for the leaders for for learners etc but it's all driven right for from this back end so uh we're doing those mappings and again ai is, is being brought in now to handle that automatically so just re, uh it's going to reduce our workload for the you know skills administrators and uh etc so now we're able to generate really cool dashboards and statistics for, for leaders, for the talent leaders, for direct managers, for, you know, to give you insights into what's happening from the skill perspective, organization-wide, right? So um, again, these dashboards are dynamic. Anybody can have these dashboards at a leader level, at a, you know, kind of department level, um, organization-wide, et cetera. So here, 
here's some examples, right? I can take a look at the bell curve. I can look, drill down into quick statistics around, oh, what are the most met skills? You know, uh, strategic uh, account development looks like, a, you know, uh, everyone is doing that one, uh, but the least met skill is database. What does that mean? Do we need to hire differently? Do we need to develop new content, et cetera? Uh, and then I'm able to dynamically drill down into you know, rich insights and data here, for example, for a specific organization. Hey, show me an organization that I met 90% of their skills or 10% of their skills, et cetera. So again, all of that is possible because of that mapping that we looked at earlier, right? So I can come up here and see, you know, production here looks like, you know, they, they got a lot of, you know, 50% of the skills met versus information technology. You know, they're not doing so hot here. So what's going on there? What does that tell me? Uh, I'm able to, again, drill down into job roles, for example. Hey, I want to see, you know, specific leaders, uh, you know, specific role that we're struggling to hire with, or we're struggling with performance, uh, how we're doing skill-wise. So I can get those insights, you know, easily here. Uh, and I can see kind of where we're doing well uh, for specific roles, where we're you know we're not doing so so well. Uh, I want to drill down into leaders specifically. Show me all the leaders that we have in our organization. Do they have the skills to actually lead or not? Um, so again, I'm able to play around with the statistics here and see who is you know who has the skills to lead and who doesn't. You know, all sorts of rich, um, uh, insightful information that are. You're know, useful across the organization, really, but for the LD, for the talent folks, for people who are making you know, content decision, talent decision, hiring decision, you're really able to drill down in, in a dynamic way, you know, um, how you're doing skill-wise. Uh, I'm able to drill down, of course, individually. Let's say an example of a specific supervisor. Hey, I wanted to drill down into uh Darren Johnson and see, you know, which skills they have not met, which skills they met. Uh, what does that mean in terms of the, you know the things that they want to do or the career path that they want to pursue? So that's kind of that's kind of what it looks like, um, you know, our, our skills approach, right? So uh, we think it's an important component of uh, you know when it comes to L and D, right? LMS, LXP, skills, all in one platform, um, and the whole thing is driven by AI, right? Very AI, you know, um, intensive for the front end for the back end now as well. So the differentiator we think here is when we're adding the AI now, that's gonna make this process of managing skills really a lot more efficient and we think more successful where you know previously, again, it'd been very unwieldy and hard, hard to manage. Another um, thing I wanted to do just a little bit more in general here, the Expert is plot one platform, um, you know, very robust, but we it's very intuitive and easy to use platform. So I wanted to give you a, a, click, a quick glimpse here into kind of what it looks like. Um, we brought that consumer great experience to the back end, right? So very frequently the vendors are focusing on uh, bringing that just for the employee side. We brought that in for, to the back end to make it more efficient for administrators to manage the platform, very simple workflow, personalization. Uh, down to the last mile functionality, everyone is able to configure and personalize the features that they work with. Hey, I just work with these features. I can come up here and manage them easily. I log in as a different administrator. You can configure things your own way. You don't have to suddenly be overwhelmed with a ton of features. Uh, very intuitive, um, you know, kind of consumer grade experience. Uh, here, you can see quick access to most common features, et cetera. Another thing I wanted to mention real briefly here is AI. We're not going to be able to talk about all the different places where we brought in AI, uh, but I want to mention a couple of things, right? So we already mentioned the skill side that, that we're bringing that in, uh, AI recommendation. We also brought in um, content creation now, AI, to help content administrators. So we have a building learning content manager where we're able to come up here and generate content maybe for the for, for those skills, right? So that makes the, the job of you know, creating the content for those skills a lot more efficient. We have um, a tool to help administrators very easily um, you know, manage the platform. There's a, a robot that we call um, kind of um, Friday, right? So um, very easy to manage platform, but as you go about managing this platform, you may forget something. Um, it uses natural language processing. Hey, how do I do a task? Uh, so this is another place where we brought in AI. And um, the last piece here is we brought in AI analytics, right? So I show you some nice looking dashboards. That's great, et cetera. Um, you know, and there's certainly a use for that. But now we brought in AI analytics where I can come up here 
um, and just use natural language processing to get those, you know, those, those skill gaps, if I could spell here. Um, right. So I, you know, very frequently, as we know, when it comes to reporting, um, there tend to be ad hoc in nature, right? I, I'm in a business meeting. I need that data right now. So how do we do it? Well, we put a request in, we ask somebody to go and filter and tinker around with a report, et cetera. So now with Expertus One, you're able to drill down here uh, using natural language processing, the way you talk to another human, and you can get that data directly, whether it's specifically to training or skills. Um, so you can see how this democratizes access to data uh, for leaders. Uh, suddenly now everyone has access to data because everyone knows how to kind of use natural language processing and you can get that data immediately. You don't have to wait two or three days for somebody to create it. So really simplifies access to data, democratizes and really streamlines um, all of that. But that's that's kind of a high level overview of what we're doing on the skill side. Really, again, um, uh, LMS, LXP skills in one platform. We think the skills component is really uh, an important drive going forward. Again, for some of the reasons that my colleague Kayla mentioned earlier, right? Technology changing the, the the skills that you need to do to to do your job is is rapidly changing. You know, new new technologies coming in, labor shortages. Your know, organization relying in skills, kind of in house. Uh, to engage with their employees as opposed to going out there to the market and, you know, and finding yeah. uh, new a new employees. So, sure. yeah, that's okay. it. So Karen, um, is there anything? Yeah, and, go ahead. Yeah, we have a couple of questions. So I'm going to address one of them and then I'm going to ask you to address one of them. So we have a question about does the system generate potential problem areas for skills, for example, similar positions with different skills? Also, what taxonomy have you based the system on and how do you keep it up to date? So I'll address that one. Um, yeah, that's part of our our um, AI system. We have, what we'll be doing is um, we are, are using a, a third Third party um, tool to access current market skills. And we'll be using that to do the generation of the skills to jobs mapping. So we'll be kept up to date because it will be based on um, you know, current job postings and the like. So that will help you keep it up to date. Uh, the taxonomy will um, might not always match one to one with what you're using as an organization, but they can can be bucketed. But that is, like I said, another area where where um, we can do some alignment um, within within the solution. But we'll be keeping it up to date because it will be based on market system uh, for generate potential problem areas with the skills with similar positions with different skills. That's a really uh, excellent position. That is for, for us, sort of, we're, we're focusing on the L&D uh, side of things. Um, that is sort of a, a part of a bigger picture for, for HR and talent. Um, and again, uh, I think our longer term vision will be to sort of help align that. Um, but we do have, um, we will be allowing for some flexibility. So uh, you can do a default job with skills and then tailor that when that job gets assigned to the user. So uh, for example, if a job has a critical skill um, and then it's applied out to two users, one user, it actually is a critical skill, but it's not so critical for another user. User, we're going to uh, offer that granularity in controls, but that kind of conflict based is sort of part of a bigger, bigger data picture um, that that outside of, of, of LD and more into the, the scale of HR. Uh, the second question for Farrick was, you know, how are we using this for onboarding or how can the solution be used for onboarding to make sure that new hires have the skills that they need to have to do their jobs? Yeah, we have some great tools for that. Uh, we have some great tools to content drip, for example, so you can create, you know, onboarding programs, right? And we're doing that tie-in with, uh, hey, this this is the type of skill, this type of training you get as part of, uh, you know, when you get hired, right? And that's triggered automatically, but we have some tools to control the content dripping, for example, automatically, whereas, you know, very frequently we're dumping, you know, 20, 30 courses on our as on, as part of the onboarding process, we can get into content dripping where we're actually, hey, here's course one. And then based on how you interact with that course, uh, we're going to push some content, some other content to you. So everyone gets those 30 courses for that job role. But when you get it, the timing depends on kind of how you're interacting with that content, et cetera. So that's automatic. Uh, we're, able, we're handling that automatically via the rules that we have on the back end. But we're going a little bit below that where we're accounting for the learners or the employees' personal kind of behavior and engagement with the content. Any other questions uh, there? Uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jess. Yeah, we we're looking at the same yeah. one. Can can yeah. it be embedded into my current LMS if I use it for onboarding? If if are you asking if Expertus One could be embedded into your uh can talk to your current LMS just for onboarding purposes? Yes, that's that's the question. 
Yeah, I mean, we would have to see. So we have our own, you know, our own learning platform, right? So uh, yeah, if you think if you're thinking just this component, kind of the the skills module, I, I think there's a potential for that that would have uh, that we can look at as well. But I just want to be clear. So expert is one LMS LXP skills, but yeah, the skills potentially, uh, you know, could uh, be deployed in the in another context. So it's something we have to look to look at that. Yeah, we have a really uh, very very flexible integration platform. We can integrate into. Uh most things back and forth, uh, you know, uh, either direction works best for you. And we're at the top of the hour, Jess. Yeah. Just thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Caitlin and Farrick. This was really awesome. And thank you everyone for your questions and your engagement for today's demo. And thank you to Expertus One for our demo today. So we're going to go ahead and take a short break. Please make sure that you grab any links or any information and that you reach out to Caitlin and Farrick with any additional questions. And we will be back with our next demo at 2.15 Eastern.